Oh man, the comedy in this episode was just pure, pure gold. Amazing, so funny, so hilarious. I love this drama. If I haven't said it before, I'll say it now. If I said it before, I'll say it again. I love this drama so much. The characters, the storyline, and also towards the end. Man, they really left us on a cliffhanger. So at the beginning of the episode, we see Junan rushing into the ER. He wanted to see a patient. Later, we do find out that he wanted to see Iksun, but she left. Her IV was done. She was feeling better, so she left. She even texted him that too. Then later, we see the boys outside arguing. No surprise there about hiking. Jungwon insisted that they go hiking, but the other three was like, "No, we're not going." Uh. So Kyung had the most funniest line in that scene. Mountains should be admired, not climbed on. <laughs> and then their argument stopped for now when Songwa came with her car, and then they went to go get hamburgers. Songwa is already just done with their bickering, with their nagging, with their constant attitude of acting like kids, even when they were trying to choose what hamburger they want. Just. Just that scene alone, from hiking to hamburgers, that scene alone defines their friendship, and I love that. We finally got to see the girl who got into a motorcycle accident. Oh, I forgot her name. I apologize. But yeah, we got to see her again. It feels like a while. I think we haven't seen her in maybe two episodes. But she is getting speech therapy, and she is relearning how to walk again, which is good. Um, progress. Yeah. Um, hopefully this episode will not be the last time we see her because I do want to see her get better and able to speak again, walk again. Because just leaving her story basically not finished is not a good way to end her story. I want to get to Jayhawk now. We are learning a little bit more about his wife. Uh, so first he married his wife after three years of dating. They tried to have a kid but couldn't. And on her 40th birthday, she announced that she doesn't want to have kids anymore because、uh, she doesn't want to feel exhausted. She she doesn't want to be stressed out. And Jayak, even though、uh, he wants to have kids, he really does. He does support her decision and enjoys the joyful life that he has with her, coming home, nagging about co、uh, coworkers, his coworkers and hers, nagging about family. And then later on, we find out that she's pregnant. Yeah, and she didn't even know. Like, um, her her period was inconsistent, but she didn't even thought about being pregnant. But she is, and then without hesitation, I guess because the joy of being pregnant and those two tried before but couldn't, she was like, uh, which method would she had to do to get the baby out? A C section or through her, you know. And then she said that she has a bump on her right breast, and in my mind, off the bat, I was like, "Oh no, that better not be cancer." Then later we do find out it is cancer, stage two breast cancer. And here's the thing: when they talked to the first doctor, she said、um, she can have chemotherapy, just not when you're pregnant because it's it can be risky. But then once they talked to Sokyung, which he definitely saved the day. Well, first before they even talked to them, it was like a back and forth between Jayak and his wife, where he was willing to give up the baby to save his wife's life. But the wife was like, "No, I am going to wait until I give birth to my kid, and then I'll have the chemotherapy." But again, Sokyung came in with the save, saying that. You can have chemotherapy while you're still pregnant, so good. Because in my mind, I was thinking the worst. Now for Gyul, I knew she was hiding something. Um, I knew that there was something more than just her mom falling and breaking her ribs and fractured bones. There was so much more than that. And plus, we see her kind of in a state of worriedness, troubled. Um. I think for about two episodes, we've seen small scenes of her dealing with something that they didn't reveal to us. So again, I was right. So first,、um, her brother came to see her. He said that his ex-fiance broke off 
the engagement. Why? Because he told his ex fiance everything about his family, and then she told her parents how、um, his dad is not going to attend the wedding because he's in jail. He assaulted the mom. She didn't just fall, she was assaulted. Fractured nose, fractured ribs, ruptured eardrums. Damn. And then later we see Gil talking to her mom on the phone, and she told her mom, Hey, if you're gonna go back to Guangzhou, I'm gonna go back with you. I'm gonna hand in my letter of resignation, quit my job, and move back with you. And when the camera、uh, moved to the right in that scene, I thought Jung Won was going to be sitting in one of those stairs. I thought, but he wasn't. He was in Gil's office, and when Gil saw him in her office, she ran to him, hugged him, and cried. Right now, Gil needs someone to lean on, and Jung Won is that person, obviously. But yeah, she needs support and someone to lean on. And then later, we see Gil having a meal with Jung Won, and this is when she tells him everything how abusive her dad was, what really happened to her mom. How comfortable it was for Gil and her brother to sleep at night when they moved to Seoul for college, knowing that their dad wasn't there. And coming from the viewer's point of view, well, I should say mine, seeing her character go through this, it makes an amazing storyline. It really does.、Uh, looking at it from a real life point of view, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know everything. I don't. I'm not a smart ass.、Uh, but I can only imagine. That's, that's the only thing I can say. I can only imagine what she's going through emotionally. And Jung Won, he is the perfect person to really comfort her. He tells her, don't torture yourself so much. It's not your fault. And he, he is such a sweet guy. He really is the perfect boyfriend for her. Now let's get to Ik Soon and Junan. So, first, she finally texted him back. Uh, she asked him if he was free. So they both agreed that on Monday they're both free, 6 p.m. at the steakhouse. But then there was a surgery that Junan had to do, so he moved it up to 7 30. But then when he got to the steakhouse, it was 9 45. But I did expect Ik Soon to still be there because knowing what he does, it's understandable for Junan to be late, and she was still there. This is where Ik Soon does apologize for lying to him and breaking up with him. And then, to, to sum up their scene, it ended off with just Junan asking, Can you act like nothing has ever happened every time we meet face to face? Because I can't. Basically, it sums up to they're going to get back together and they both love each other. I do not want to leave out. When the main five were headed to Sokcho. So they planned out everything. They were getting there. Now, when they were in the car, so first, Junan was in the car with Songwa and Ik Jun, and then Sokyong was with Jongwon. Junan, he said, Can we get to Sokcho without any issues? Because he said that, you know something's going to happen. And then Songwa got a call for an emergency. Then she had to go back. In the car is just Junan and Ik Jun. In the car with Sokyong and Jongwon, Jongwon gets a call and he had to go back. It's just Sokyong. And then while in the car with Ik Jun and Junan, Ik Jun gets a call. He has to go back. And now <laughs> Junan is in the car by himself. Sokyong is in the car by himself. The music plays, the music adds, and it's just so funny. And just seeing the two just standing outside in front of the house while the music is still playing, hilarious! Later, we find out that the house is actually owned by Mina's parents. They didn't even know about it, they just booked it randomly. And plus, there are two pictures of Mina in the room that they're staying in. Mina gets note of it later on, calls her mom, and tells her who they are, but then also tells her mom that one of the professors is the one that she admires. The mom says, Which one? Mina says the one that looks like a bear. <laughs> This is where we see the relationship between Sokyong and Junan is very not eye to eye because they basically don't agree to anything other than eating. <laughs>、uh, the first one was the remote. Junan wanted to watch golf 
So Kyung wanted to watch something else. And then when they got uh, sashimi from Mina's parents, Junan was like, I want bear. You want bear? Nope, soju. Oh, it's hot in here. Should I open the window? No, it's cold. I'm going to bed. Junan turns off the light and then we hear So Kyung go, yeah. Now before I get to the last scenes of this episode, I just got to say, the main five performing in leather, they look good. And they were rocking out. That's awesome. I would pay to see them perform live. I would. There were two scenes in this episode I thought it was a nice throwback to season one. The first scene was when Jungwon was taking out money from the ATM machine. He turns around and sees Ikjun. I thought Ikjun was going to ask for some more money. I really thought he was and for some more cigarettes. And I think that was it. I think. Oh wait, didn't he also ask for an umbrella? But anyway, and then the second scene was it was raining and Ikjun made coffee for him and Songwa, which was a nice throwback to season one too. So my impression on this episode, again, the comedy in here was just pure gold. Everything was just so funny. Um, I love seeing some of the storylines that our character is going through. Like first, uh, Gyul with her abusive father and the condition that her mom is in. Seeing Jayhawk in that type of situation, because most of the time, we've seen Jayhawk with Junan, you know, just being funny, being adorable and stuff like that. We... We've always seen him smiling, but just seeing him in that situation was a nice change of pace and it was a nice a breath of fresh air for his character. Also, it was nice to see So Kyung ask Mina what she's doing and if she's free instead of the other way around. Also, there's a doctor who has a crush on Gil, but I wouldn't really see that as a problem. Uh, love triangle? Not really. I wouldn't call it equivalent to the love triangle, well, the short love triangle that we had in season one with Song Gua, Yik Jun, and the other doctor. But yeah, I, I guess it was just an extra thing that they're going to add on, but I wouldn't say it'll play a big part in the storyline. And yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the episode and my review. If there's anything I might have missed, please leave it in the comments below. Other than that, if you like this video, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. See ya!